Hey YouTube, how's it going? Today we're going to take a look at Lionfish Part 2. If you haven't seen the first video I made, uh, I highly recommend you check that one out first before you see this one because this one might leave you with more questions if you don't see that one first. So uh, the whole main basis behind it is I got sick of being able to see that the only videos that were being promoted on YouTube were how to fillet a lionfish and how to uh, spear a lionfish or shoot them under the water with a gun or whatever the case is. We understand it's invasive species in the Gulf Coast. It's not like that isn't a big deal, because it is a big deal. That is a very threatening problem. We're losing hundreds of species every single day to these predators that aren't used to the area that they're in that have hardly anything for predators coming back at them. So uh, definitely a big problem. But for the hobbyists, we want to know how to be able to keep them in our own aquarium. Living up in Wisconsin, I don't have to necessarily worry about the nearest body of water being infected by lionfish because it's all fresh water. So uh, this is to be able to bring a little bit more light to the species in general and just show the different variants and, uh, well, species that you'll be working with or can work with that you find in the hobby. So I'm wearing my I'd Rather Be Playing With My Lionfish V-neck, which I got from my girlfriend uh, for Christmas. And, of course, I've got my... <clears throat> yeah, it's a lionfish plush toy. It's a lionfish plush toy. I don't, you know she cares. You know she cares, because I don't even know where I'd find this. So, uh, everyone knows lionfish have been my thing for a little bit now. It's been at least a couple, of, it's been a few years. It's been a few years that I've worked with lionfish, uh, sea goblins, the toadfish, the whole nine yards. Uh, venomous fish have been my thing just because it seems so misunderstood and not a lot of people seem to want to talk about it uh, because of the dangers that they think they're going to have in their own aquarium or how dangerous or aggressive they seem like they're going to be, but really it's just a laid back fish looking for something small to fit in its mouth. So uh, hopefully these videos bring a little bit more of a calm or a chillness to the species in general. This is definitely going to have the rest of them that I didn't show in the last video in this video. So lots of cool slow-mo feeding clips. If you guys have questions or concerns or anything you want to be able to know, post them down below. I'm normally pretty good about getting back to people, but I've been doing it more lately than I have in the past. So life's been crazy, but I uh, hope Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, questions leave them on down below and uh, we'll get to it. Something I wanted to be able to catch in the previous video, which you are seeing being displayed right here by this volatile lionfish, is how they use the technique of pulling in water and then pushing it back through out of the front of their mouth to put the fish into more of a state of paralysis or almost kind of tranquilize the fish in a weird way. Um, as they keep on sucking in that water, you can see that he's pushing it through because the antenna down at the end of his mouth, you can see them pull in and you can see them expand back out as he's pushing out that breath. Um, this is just more of a oddball technique that it wasn't really noticed until the last couple of years because they took a video of watching one of these fish suck up, uh, I think it was a shrimp or maybe it was a goldfish, and they noticed that this fish stopped and took time before it actually made its final kill and what they noticed in that slow-mo footage was that the fish was pushing out all this water at the item in front of it and that item wouldn't move whatsoever it just kind of sat there and took it so you're going to notice that towards the end of the clip once it speeds back up that those scales are really puffing a lot faster than they seem like they are in the slow-mo um, but as the goldfish gets closer to them obviously it's going to pick up more than what it's far away but you can definitely see it's a pretty darn good example of this whole, uh, I guess, technique to be able to help kind of aid their ambush. So I never really see it with any of the other lionfish. The volatins never seem to, I guess, fail at it. It's always something that they end up trying out, but I don't see it with the radiatas or the dwarfs as much as I do see it with the volatins. Now, Obviously, you guys remember my ReefWise.com review. This is the radiata from that. Still a very complicated fish to be able to work with, but unfortunately, I lost him and the dwarf zebra and a few others. The only ones that lived were the Entonata, the sea goblins, and the toadfish at the time, which is why I kind of stepped back and stopped putting out videos, because I was just tired of seeing it happen. Um, but my son, Sun Power, had, had given out and put just the largest amount of stray voltage into an aquarium I've never had to be able to touch. Uh, so what lived lived and the rest of them didn't so I would picked up a newer radiata which you can see him here with the entonata as they're both meeting for the first time and as you watch this purple tang comes over and just nips the end of the radiata's fin pulling off a part of the fin uh, I had taken out that purple tang immediately after seeing this I was surprised that he had actually gone up and done it right in front of me 
uh, tangs, butterflies, you never know what's going to nip at the lionfish. If you notice any kind of damage, take out or find the problem uh, before it gets too bad, because the lionfish just can't handle that long term. Occasional nips, sure. Non-stop pecking, because it's just an algae grazer being kind of a jerk. <laughs> Not a good idea to keep the two of them together. So he was pulled out very shortly after this video was made, but uh, settled in just fine. He's still doing fine to this day. Feeding on frozen food, but you got him eating ghost shrimp here in this clip. Don't mind the sea urchin in the back corner. That happened after the whole powerhead incident, but I just never took it out. Um, beautiful fish. One of my favorite fish. One of the most difficult. Now, I will say, the ReefWise.com Red Eye Dwarf Lion Fish. <laughs> Whoa! did not do well with eating. You can see him being outcompeted by the dwarf zebra. Uh, he's outcompeted by the volatin, backing away with a shrimp in its mouth. He just couldn't catch anything. So I'm hoping that has something else to do with it. Uh, I don't think it was just the voltage that messed with this one. But beautiful fish, one of my favorites. Highly recommend the red eyes. Uh, it's just a phenomenal looking fish, especially as they get bigger. The males have bright red eyes, they have great green coloring. This is definitely one of my favorite dwarfs to work with, and they don't get that big. You're looking at a baseball sized fish at the max. Uh, dwarf lions don't get past six inches on average. You can keep these guys in a 55 gallon tank, where a volatin is going to need at least 150 to 180, being that size of a softball. And as big as he is, he finishes up the meal for the red eye real quick. <laughs> Uh, you can see here I got a clip of the sea goblin trying to go after food. I got bad news for him because that lionfish isn't going to let it happen. Uh, that lionfish is a little bit more of an oddball, similar to that of a Russell's, which I thought it was, similar to that of a Volodin, but it is actually an Andover lionfish, A-N-D-O-V-E-R. A little bit more of an oddball looking lionfish. They still get fairly big, about 12 to 14 inches. Uh, but they're definitely a lot faster than any of the bottom dwellers. So of course I took a second shot for the sea goblin to get his food. Way too big for the radiata, so we know that this is going to be a golden chance. Scared off the Andover lionfish already. That quick. They use the same technique. The downside is they're just a little bit slower, so you've got to take the time. Toadfish, however, don't care either way. Here's a little clip of one after a piece of frozen silver side, which I highly recommend. All the lions are eating, but he gets whatever goes in front of his little cave every single time. He does not seem to care. But that is all I have for Lionfish 2. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have questions about anything involved in the video or anything venomous in general when it comes to all these fish, shoot me a message, leave a comment down below. I will do my best to be able to put out videos as always, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.